So, Andrew, I'll give you Bateman one-on-one -on, -one on an undercard of a very, very big match that I have just signed. One of the biggest cards in movie trivia schmodown history, Andrew Guy versus Ben the Boss Bateman. It would be incredible to get Andrew Guy's best game against Ben Bateman's best game in an Action Army sequel. Chris Jericho takes on Kevin Smith. Chris Jericho wants to play. The Ayatollah of rock and roller. I'm not messing around. Look out, movie trivia, schmow down. But I can compete. Like, I, I love that shit. I'm ready to schmow down. Throw down with the schmow down. Who will win? Join us. Subscribe now. YouTube.com slash the schmow down. Everybody, welcome back to the movie trivia schmodown. The singles tournament is underway, and what a matchup we have for you guys. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by my partner in crime there from the newsies, Mark Ellis. How are you, buddy? Uh, Amity Island is great, Christian, doing a little bit of fishing, a little bit of hunting, and I just got this nerd scientist on my back. But hey, I still got my boat, the Orca. I'm looking forward to more adventures and what a matchup we have today. The winner is going to take on uh, somewhat of a rookie, but then we also have two, I don't want to say rookies, I don't want to say they're new because we've seen them in previous seasons, but we're really going to get a test of knowledge here today. We're going to find out who could be a champion one day. Well, we that's exactly right. What we have here is is just untapped potential uh, for both of these guys because you have uh, Tim the Tank Franco, who was a guy that we saw reacting with late to the party, and he's just answering everything on the couch. And you're like, how good is this guy going to be? And he's the thing is, what people don't understand is he's one of the first fan fans that came into the league that competed and he competed uh, at such a level matt atchity who is no, by no means a slouch tim franco tko'd him in his first match you're like oh my god tim franco this guy is going to be a champ and then we didn't see him we didn't see him for many seasons until last season he was stacy howard's mysterious partner became part of corruption but this year he was drafted by the quirky mercs so how will he do He's going up against the guy who is the definition of an enigma, Mark. Yeah, it's a riddle wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in an enigma with a little bit of a cherry on top because this guy, Tom Christian, I don't know what the hell he is. I don't know what species he hails from. I don't know what phylum to classify in, but I do know this. Guys answered a lot of correct questions as part of a team. But what is Tom going to do when he's all by himself? He doesn't have video Drew there pulling the strings either figuratively or literally. And then he's going up against, like you said, Tim Franco. It's been a minute since I've gotten to see the tank in person. I didn't know if there was some sort of weird Breaking Bad deal went south at the border of Albuquerque and Arizona. But he's here today. Tom is here and we are ready to go. We are ready to go, but you know you brought, you bring that up about video Drew. It's a it's a great it's a great point because Tom was brought into this league by video Drew, and while they were together, he just seemed unstoppable. Since their split, we have only seen Tom once, and he was paired together with Paul Preston. And people said these guys, no one's going to beat him, and they lost their first match. And Tom, for the first time, missed a question. I think in the first round, he he missed something. I think in the, in the final round, and it's like, well, wait a minute, is missing video Drew hurting? And then the same can be said about Paul Preston. Everyone said, oh, Paul Preston lights out. He gets knocked out, TKO by Eric Zipper. So the den right now, struggling, hurting right now. Tom could be either breaking the curse or continuing it. We're gonna find out in just a little bit, but we're gonna find out exactly how we got here today. Both of our competitors, lots of stuff happening with the den. I'm sure Grace is gonna have some words for me for saying that there's a curse on the den. I can hear it already. And we're starting. Go, go, you're in my light. Go away, Tom. Go. 
But don't you want to see a dead body? This might be my favorite matchup of the first round matchups. Tim Franco versus Tom. Tom, he has shown up here. He was an enigma, but he, he just kept delivering correct answer after correct answer, but he was always teamed with Video Drew. Tom's weird. Tom's knowledgeable. Tom's great, but he's no mercenary, and he's no Tim Franco. I'm, I'm looking for an upset here, and I think Franco can do it. Tim Franco, in his lone singles match, played mad at you, and he missed one question. There's no doubt in my mind he's going hard to prepare for this match, and that's why I, th I think he could do it. Oh, hello. Who am I me? I'm just learning every fact about every movie thanks to this great book. The man's a tank, but more importantly, the man's a mercenary. Now, a mercenary needs to have a perfect shot. So I'm gonna go for Mr. Perfect Ground, Tim Franco. First, I would like to thank the seven to eight fans out there who raised their voices to the sky and said, we want to see Tim Franco in the singles division. I'm back in the singles division for the first time since 2017. And up first for me, is someone by the name of Tom? Tom? Tom. 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 Right, Tom. Mommy. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm the den mother, but I, <laughs> just to be clear, you know I'm not your actual mother, right? Because if we had spun that, Tom, if we had just with the hands, you are in the singles tournament, okay? Do you know what that means? It means you will not be playing with Paul or Video Drew, okay? No Paul. No Drew friend? Tim Franco is going to make Tom work for this W. I have a mission, and that mission is to take the target down. And Tom is my first target. You're in a desert, and you see a turtle on its back. Look at this guy. Look at this guy, Paul. That's, that's Tommy Johnson. He looks slow. And then the next thing you know, he's gone for five days. So, that's like you, Tom. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990. And I'm calm. I'm calm as Spidey Cat. He's gonna nap about it, because we're ready. I would like to be your friend. You seem cool. You know, I like strange people, and I think it'd be good for you to have a friend in the Schmodown. And I'm offering my hand in friendship, even after I beat you. I'm going to return to my studying, I'm going to get ready for this match, and I'm going to win. Have you heard of this John Roca guy? He knows a lot. Look, it, it it is what it is. This was a match that I think that you. This is a pick a match. You, you, this is the, they're both very very skilled. Tom has not been tested in singles yet. Uh, Tim has not played singles in in three years. So uh, it, this could go either way. Yeah, I mean, you get these from time to time when you have a tournament setting and the field is rich with 32 different squads, so to speak, who can all play well. It's not a name brand necessarily. In March Madness, this is not Kansas going up against Carolina. This is two smaller schools. We know they can hit a lot of threes or in movie trivia knowledge, they know a lot about a lot of different wheel slices, but who is going to bring their A game today and advance to take on Jader Parama? The Mercs are looking good. The Den, struggling a little bit here, but here are both the managers, Koi Jandrew, Kate Mulligan, and Grace. All right, we start with Grace. How are you feeling going into this match with, uh, you know, Tim and Tom? I'm feeling great. You know, I realize that you love taking little jabs at us, Christian. God bless you, but we're not afraid of the quirky Merkins or whatever the hell they're called. You know, he was our first pick for a reason, and he's weird just the way I like him, and Kate's going to keep him in line today. We have a, a pop system set up to keep him focused, and I'm really looking forward to this. Well, no shots taken, just calling it like it is. And uh, Kate, how do you feel about going into this match between Tim and Tom and, and how Grace has always uh, had a problem with me and, and, and this is uh, maybe could be hurting, uh, you know, hurting her managing going into this and not focusing at the prize at hand? Huh? 
Listen, all I gotta say is, you, you're asking me how I feel about going with my number one guy? <laughs> this is this is my favorite day of the of the month. Now I know it's early, but I'm just saying, this is my this is gonna be my favorite match of the year right here. I feel great. Mark, boy, uh, talk to you. There's a lot of red hair on screen right now, and I also see Deadpool over your right shoulder. So why don't you tell me what exactly it is about Tim the Tank Franco that you think not only is going to get him to win in this match, but is going to introduce him to all of the fans where he came from? Well, to me, he's a true mercenary. There's there's someone I don't have to worry about. There's someone who I can just guide slightly. He's Mr. Perfect Round. If there's someone I can literally unleash in the night. And by the way, the quirky Merkins is our After Dark show. We don't talk about it here. It's the family network. It's, it's Tim Frank. The tank himself is going to handle his business. This is one of the matches where I felt really confident going in. And I feel just as confident now that it's lining up. And I like Tom because he's weird. He's quirky. But he's no Tim Franco, and there's just such a comfort in knowing that. This this is going to be that match. So I feel very much the same as these two ladies do, but it's Tim's game. Well, let me ask you this, Coy. Um, and this is a little bit inside uh, information here that now that we're way past the deadline of trading anyway. There was an attempt by an unnamed manager that I will say to you that tried to get Tim Franco from you, and you said, no way i'm gonna go i'm gonna go after i'm gonna use tim for this tournament i think that he's the guy he fits into the mercs and the deal was decent so uh it was it, it just you're that confident with tim franco uh going into this thing it's been interesting because tim's the only one of the mercs i haven't met and that's just because of geography but i knew from his way of being both in matches and out what i'd heard about him as a person from our few interactions online that i really wanted him to be my guy so as soon as we spoke around that time frame he heard about that offer as well he reached out to me we had a great conversation and from that moment i was like no no singles this is where it's all going to happen and this has been since the draft i've been ready for this moment and even with some roadblocks in the way like today's the day all right, last question here. Uh, Grace, I'm hoping we could kind of put our differences aside uh, while I ask you this next question. I know that how much is riding with uh, with Tom here because Paul Preston, another very skilled competitor, got knocked out. And then you have uh, James White, who did win the match, but barely. So are you guys nervous going into this match? And is it a much needed win in this tournament? You ask me this a lot. Here's what I'm just going to say, and you can just take this as my blanket answer. The Den never gets nervous, ever. Even if things don't go our way today, we will always find a way to bounce back. We will always find a way to use it in our favor. So no, we're not nervous today. We weren't nervous yesterday. We're not nervous tomorrow, okay? Sounds good to me. All right, Kate, I want to follow that up or, or right, no? I just I wanted to say, I know for a fact the winner today is going to have a name that starts with a capital T and ends in an M. Well, they don't call you the best uh, manager in the business for nothing. All right. Thank you so much to Kate, to Grace, and to Coy. And uh, we'll see you in just a moment here. All right. Dropping them out. And I Man, am. They are raring to go, Christian. I'm, this is going to be exciting. I am less scared now that Grace is not in the actual <laughs> room all right so let us you now seem a little ter you're usually pretty calm what? and collected when you're doing those interviews but you, you seemed a little squirrely you go back in time back in 2017 when she was doing the post interviews and she oh she was she always came after me no matter what and i could never i, I can't i can't get rid of her everyone keeps bringing her back okay her. maybe scared of her some sort of come together moment you guys need to have on camera. I think all the fans would want to see. Want, no, that's why I'm, I'm. I have more courage on digital. All right, let's uh, let's now let's start with the actual match itself. Are you ready? Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the den. Making his Schmodown singles debut. This is Tom. 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 Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm not. I'm not in the den. I'm in the living room. No, no, no. The den is no. The den is the the faction that you're on. It's 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 your team that is here. You're playing for them today. Are you? Uh, how do you feel about that? Actually, I'm in the bedroom. 
Okay, okay. Tom. Uh, Tom, do, do you see where your webcam is? Can, can you can you look the fans in the eye and just say hi to everybody who's rooting for you today? Okay. All right, Tom. Uh, Tom, the, any words on Tim Franco, the tank that you're uh, that you're going up against today? Tim and Tom have the same number of letters. It's not. A, it's, I mean, I can't give you a point, but it's not. It's not inaccurate. Um, Correct. I'm pretty sure this is the bedroom. I can't tell if they're sleeping though. Well, oh, well, let's not. Let's let's not. Uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna try to attempt a, one more question here. Uh, do you know who Kate Mulligan is? Mommy. Fair enough. All right, Tom. I'm gonna put you in the uh, in the room at the moment here, and we'll bring you back. Uh, God help us all. All right. So he wasn't yeah. wrong. He wasn't wrong about anything. That's the problem. Is that what he answers? He's answering correctly, but he's just yeah. not. You know what I'm saying. And his opponent, representing the quirky Mercs, with a record of one win, no defeats, and one knockout, Tim the Tank Franco. Tim the Tank Franco back in the singles division. Tim come a, a long way man you, i mean look you still have never really addressed the fact that you turned your back on your on your friends late to the party last year you went with corruption uh you get drafted by the mercs and uh you know and here you are just a, a whole new person how are you feeling going into this tournament i'm feeling great you know singles is where i i started singles is really where my heart's at you know it's it's all about you yourself owning the trivia and everything is on your back and and i love that i love the pressure and i'm i'm ready for it you know, and in terms of those late to the party guys, I mean, you know, the true mercenaries don't have friends. Now, what true mercenaries can have is a family, and that's what I've found in the Quirky Mercs is a family. All right. Taking the Quirky Merc uh, pickup seriously, Christian. I like it. Uh, Tim, you'll see on the back of my wall there, there's a guy named John Riggins, immortalized. He also sported a mohawk with a lot of success. What is it about the mohawk that shows the world and particularly your opponent, Tom, here today, how much you mean business? Well, mercenaries like to carry swords, and this just reminds me of a blade. And uh, you know, if I if I if I really if I'm really into it, I might just slash someone with it. But I think it's intimidating, and it's low maintenance. That's the most important thing. Tom, are you okay? All right. Well, I I don't know what. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do, how do you how do you prepare for for someone like, like going up against someone like Tom? Because we still don't even think he knows that he's in a uh, movie trivia league. Um, I think I just kind of refer back to my my college years when I took some intro to psych classes. Um, you know, I think that really prepared me for for how to deal with Tom. You know, and and you know, even though even though I'm going to beat him today, just because I'm the better player, I I, I really want to be friends with him. I really hope that we can, you know, after this is all said and done, we can be friends and be pals and just kind of pal around, you know, when it's safe, of course. But, you know, I'd like to go out and, I don't know, we can go, you know, check out the graveyard, do whatever he's into. I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Maybe you guys could be buddies. All right, Tim, well, we're going to remove you here, and then we're going to bring back uh, Tom. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our competitors are in the virtual battlefield, Mark. Round number one. How's it go? That's right. Before we get to the graveyard, we get to round number one. And in round number one, the field of competitors is going to be asked eight questions from eight different corners of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Tom, do not swallow your writing utensil, sir. Thank you. You have about 15 seconds to use that writing utensil apply it to whatever writing surface you have and get the answer right. Once we ask you by name, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. You're not sure you heard a question right, you wanna buy yourself another 15 seconds of weirdness, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate the challenge, but your manager or mommy must come in and ratify and ultimately confirm that the challenge is taking place. Christian, it's getting weird and I don't think it's gonna stop. Um, no, it, it never does. Uh, and we will see how it continues on, but we will start with Tim Franco. Are you ready? I am ready and let's go. Let's do it. 
Tom, are you ready? Your head is sharp. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, everybody, here is question number one in the realm of action adventure. What is the title of the 2005 sequel to The Mask of Zorro? <laughs> they made a sequel to that? Apparently. <laughs> we'll learn something new about movies every day we host this show. Five, four, three. No, honey, you can keep your mouth. One. Pens down, please. And we start with Tim. The Legend of Zorro. That is correct. And Tom? The Legend of Zorro. Also correct. All right. So it is 1-1, one, one, Franco and Tom. And we're hoping that Tom actually doesn't eat his paper, so he has something to write on. Uh, all right. Question number two, Mark. Yeah, a guy might eat his foot, but he's also in danger of getting a perfect round. Uh, crime movies is your next category. And your question... What Oscar-winning actor stars as a slow-witted hitman in 1985's Prizzy's Honor? Once again, a film I have not heard of. If I say 1985, Christian, what movie comes to mind for you? I mean, uh, well, I don't, I don't even know anymore. I know, I know the main movie. Five, Back to the future. Three, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Tom. Ben Kingsley. Uh, that's incorrect. Uh, and we asked him. Robert De Niro? Also Looking incorrect. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. So 1-1 one, one as we get to question number three. Both Tom and Tim miss as we get to question number three, gents. Dramas. Who plays Frontier's man Hugh Glass in Alejandro Gonzalez and Aratu's The Revenant? That's a that's a cool title to have, you know? Hey, I'm Mark. I'm a frontiersman. I think you would have been. No. No. <laughs> nope. Staying in the house. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Tim. Leo. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Tom. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. That is it. Um, two, two. Thank you, Tom. Uh, all right. Next question. All right, we move on to movie quotes. These are things said in talking pictures. Your question, what classic monster movie originated the line, it's alive, it's alive? I know Tim is alive. I'm not sure what Tom is. Mm, I, I thought he might be the answer to this question. Does he uh, have a five, point? Four, three, two, one, pens down, Tom. Frankenstein. Yes, sir. And Tim? Frankenstein. Tie game. 3-3. Three, three. All right, next question. Here we go. Fantasy sci-fi. Which film in the Transformers franchise was released in 2018? Uh, you got a favorite moment in uh, Young Frankenstein, Christian? Oh, I love that movie so much. Uh, <laughs> Someone named Abby. Ab Ab Abby Normal. Four. Three, two. Bear wolf. Pens down. And Tim? The last night. That is incorrect. Oh, wait. That is incorrect. And Tom? Oh. Transformers, the last night. Also. Bumblebee, incorrect. huh? Bumblebee. Bumblebee is the answer. Yeah. Bumblebee is the answer. Three, three. Three, three. And we get to our next question here, Mark. Uh, question number six. That's right. Uh, Tom, in... Uh, Live studio matches, we encourage the audience to laugh when I say this next category. Comedies. Ah! <laughs> Who stars as lounge singer Dolores Van Cartier in 1992's Sister Act? Uh, Grace Hancock weighing in, Christian, saying her favorite quote from Young Frankenstein. Put the candle oh, back. Easily. Five, four, three... Two, one, and pens down, and Tom. Whoopi Goldberg. Yes. Tim. Whoopi Goldberg. Four, four. They, even the questions they're missing, they're still staying close to each other. Tie game as we get to question seven. Here you go. What famous werewolf film was directed by 
John Landis. Yeah, you know, Christian, that's the heat of competition. As long as you can, you don't have to be perfect. As long as you can keep pace and draft off your opponent a little bit, you got a chance. That's right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Tim. An American Werewolf in London. Yes, Tom. An American Werewolf in London. That is correct. Five, five. And we get to our last question here, Mark. Question number eight. That's right, and that comes in the category of animated movies. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question, what legendary comedian is the voice of Mr. Potato Head in Toy Story? And now my favorite line from American Werewolf in London. A naked American man stole my balloon. Is that is that an actual line? I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Five. When he, when he wakes up in the zoo. Four, three, two. One. Pens down, please. Pens down. And we start with Tom. Don Rickles. Yes. Tim. Don Rickles. Six, six. And we find ourselves here six to six, six to six, as we now bring in both Kate and Coy. And we have ourselves a tie game here. Six, six. Mark, round number two. What are the rules? More rules, gentlemen, so take a breather. Managers, here you go. In round number two, this is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. You're not spinning the wheel, you're just kind of looking at it and willing it to move around. We'll take care of that from a technical standpoint. Once you settle on a category, you're gonna have four questions in that world. Each question's worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Uh, Christian, because Tom and Tim are tied, however, Tim was introduced second, technically the higher ranked player. He is gonna get to confer with his manager first as whether he wants to spin the wheel or defer to his maybe human opponent. All right, we're gonna drop both Tom and Kate out. Hopefully Tom comes back. Uh, and we will give you 60 seconds, Coy, to talk to Tim starting now. So obviously the merit of going second would be there. If there's anything on the wheel you don't feel comfortable with, there's a one in 12 chance that gets taken out. But I feel like with your knowledge, there's there's so much you know in every category. It's really how you feel momentum wise going from the first to second round. If you want the moment yeah. to breathe, let's take it. If not, let's let's ride it out. What are you feeling? Um, I think I'm gonna let him go first. I think I'm gonna defer. That's okay. my first instinct too. So if, if that's yeah. cool with you, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right. Thank okay. you guys. We're gonna drop you out. Uh, both Coy and Tim. We're gonna bring back Tom and Kate. Kate, you got 60 seconds here to talk to Tom starting okay. now. Tom. Tom. Mom. Mommy. Tom. Nope. 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 Not actually your mom. Tom. Not Tom. mom. Watch it. Watch it, Tom. Watch it. Watch it. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Tom. You're gonna spin that wheel. You're doing awesome. You're doing just as awesome as your as your name. No, okay. Oh, for the love of all things sacred. Okay. Let's just can we get the wheel up? Let's just get this guy a spin, shall Let's we? The wheel. Here's the wheel, and it is up, and the spin is in, starting now. No, Tom. Tom. I hope Kate has a lot more of those poppers, Christian. I'm gonna find out. I mean, this is really something else I'm uh, it. uh james bond 60 seconds to talk bond here if you want to keep it starting now tom how do you feel do you know who james bond is mm, yes would you like to keep this one he's the man in the fancy suit okay i feel good about this but it really depends on how you feel buddy no okay. i've done this one before you have so tom would you like to stay on this or spin again Okay, Tom. That's. Yeah, I want to make. I want. I want to make it go again. You want to make it go again? All right. Here's the second spin. Okay. Whatever the spin is, and here it is. Round and round it goes, landing once again. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Julia Roberts. Thank you, you for that. Tom, you know who that is? Okay. All right, Julia Roberts. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, good luck, Kate. All right. Going to bring back. Well, not you. Uh, we're going to bring back Mr. Tim Franco here. There he is. 
All right, guys. Tom, you're going to have uh, four questions in the realm of Julia Roberts films. Julia Roberts films. And we start with this one. Here we go. Julia Roberts co-stars with Sally Field, Shirley MacLaine, and Dolly Parton in which film? Steel Magnolias. Yes, sir. Two points. Tom, Tim, I, I especially hate to ask Tom any favors, but if we could just see your your hands, gentlemen, just to make sure you're not uh, either Googling something or sticking them where they don't belong. Right. Thank you. All right, question two. Julia Roberts co-stars with Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins in which film? Can you repeat the question? First one. Julia Roberts co-stars with Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins in which film? Five. Hero. It's incorrect. Tim, you have a chance to steal here. I'm going to repeat the question. Julia Roberts co-stars with Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins in which film? Wag the dog. Looking for Hook. Hook. Oh, my goodness. Hook is the answer for that one. All right. Uh, here is question three. Which actor from TV's Seinfeld had a supporting role as Richard Gere's lawyer in Pretty Woman. Jason Alexander. For two points. Best and quote it, of all time. Right. And finally, finally, in which 1995 film does Julia Roberts' character discover that her husband, played by Dennis Quaid, is cheating on her? Can you repeat the question? Second one. In what 1995 film does Julia Roberts' character discover that her husband, played by Dennis Quaid, is cheating on her? Something to talk about. That is correct. For two points, Tom hits that one there. Big one. Uses it and gets it as we see ourselves. 12-6. Tom has a big shot there, and we're going to take him out and bring back Coy Jandrew as we now get to 60 seconds here to talk to uh, Tim starting now. So going into this, uh, we got to remember multiple choice, and he went through most of his JTE. So you've got all yours left. We're doing good shape, and... He lost one like cleanly, so I feel really good about this second round for us. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be good. I'm, I'm really kind of mad I missed that hook one, but it's okay. It happens. It's the ones that are right in front of your face that are the mm -hmm. hardest to get. Forest, trees, etc. All right, let's see this wheel. All right, here's the wheel, and we start. Here it is. I got to tell you, Christian, I love that hook question. I think that threw a lot of people for a loop. It was a great question. Oh no! Oh, Julia, out Roberts. Of the point. Julia Roberts, but it does. It. So he gets two more spins. So here's the, this is this counts as his first spin. Round and round it goes. A lot of great performers on that, and he's historical epics slash dramas. Sixty seconds to discuss. Starting now. So I feel like this is a very broad category, which means the questions could be surfaced. But if they're deep dive, I don't know how you feel about this one in particular for yourself. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I could do well in it, but I just feel like, like you said, it's kind of broad. So I don't know if I want to risk it. So I think I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do one more spin. I totally support that. It's a big old could. Yeah. All right. Here it is. Here's the spin. I was really excited about that category. That's a bummer for me. Yeah. Well, hey, look, it's the second spin on the board here, Mark. You still might get it, but we're here. I'm not rooting for it. I'm not. I'm not trying to will a, a wheel slice here. And spinner's choice. Spinner's choice. It is. Uh, Sixty seconds to decide. Starting now. Well, I feel we, very good about both of our picks. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna move that wheel just slightly over and go to James Bond. All right, James Bond it is. James Bond it is, and obviously uh, Tim Franco knows his Bond. He was in the exhibition James Bond match, uh, and we're going to bring Coy out, bring back Tom, and here we go. Tim Franco, 
You're going to have uh, four questions in the realm of James Bond. Mark, are you ready? I am certainly ready. James Bond, the international superstar spy with very questionable practices in the bedroom. Tim, your first of four questions in the world of Jimmy Bond for two points. In 1969's On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Bond takes what false identity in order to infiltrate Blofeld's mountain estate? We need the full name. I feel like I, I'm going to play it safe and do multiple choice, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer. I can provide that. Is it A, Sir William Roberts, B, Sir Albert Kincaid, C, Sir Myron Hingle, or D, Sir Hillary Bray? The answer is D, Hillary Bray. That is correct for a point. All right, so Tim pulls out a point there as we get to our next question here, Mark. For two more points, in which Roger Moore Bond film does a fake Fabergé egg and a fellow agent's death lead 007 to uncover an international jewel smuggling operation? I feel like it's an underrated Bond film. Octopussy. All time snicker laugh name. Two points. And we move on to your penultimate question in the world of James Bond. And the query? Tim, who performed the theme song for Live and Let Die? Classic song, it's Paul McCartney and Wings. That is correct. <laughs> Covered later by Guns N' Roses. I think a little bit better the second time, but that's All a right. conversation. Uh, you can drop him, Chris. You can drop him out now if you want, Mar uh, Christian. <laughs> well, so, well, Tom, Tom is looking to, excuse me, not Tom, Tim. Sorry, Tom. Tim is looking to catch Tom with either a one point or take the lead here should he get his next one. Mark, this is his final question. Here it is. I like the Beatles more than Guns N' Roses. I'll say that. Your question <laughs> for two points. Tim, in the world of James Bond, what singer has a role in 1989's License to Kill as a corrupt televangelist named Joe Butcher? It's a great role, and it is Wayne Newton. Mr. Las Vegas gets Tim to tank two more points. Christian, we got us a ball game going into round number three. What a ball game it is. One point lead for Tim as he just leads Tom by one point going into round number three. And how does that go, Mark? Oh, this is the round that will determine the match unless we go to sudden death overtime, which I'm told we are semi-prepared for. So in round number three, we need a series of numbers from each competitor. These numbers can range from one to 20. We need three from each of you. They may not be the same numbers as your opponent. Why do we need the numbers? Well, they correspond to a different individualized category of movie trivia schmodown goodness. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five of the biggest points of your tournament so far. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round number three, though we do ask you still keep your hands where we can see them, if at all possible. Thank you, Tom. Very good. <laughs> all right, so let us start with Mr. Tim Franco. Three numbers here. You're in the lead by one. You get, you, you get to choose first. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, six, 12, and 18. Six, 12, and 18 for Tim and Tom. Five. Yes. 11. Yes. 17. I'm very yeah. proud of you. Very proud of you. You knew those numbers, buddy. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's start here with Coy. You got 60 seconds to talk to Tim starting now. I love how you handled that last round. So that one that looked like the slightest glimmer, like you took your time, you you used it. We've still got two JTEs. We got plenty of time to go into this one. I The confidence of Bond is exactly what we expected. It was glorious to behold as a viewer here. But uh, how are we feeling <laughs> round three? I'm feeling very good. Uh, you know, I like those numbers. Um, you know, I'm not gonna take it for granted though. It's still a game, so let's let's do this. Let's let's get this done. All right. They got multiples um, of three, so I appreciate the six, twelve, eighteen. I'm feeling good. <laughs> All right, Kate. You got sixty seconds to talk to Tom here, starting now. Tom. Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom. It's starting to smell in here. Okay, so that's definitely on you. Okay, buddy, you're doing great. I want you to know that you are doing awesome. Okay, you just keep doing that Tommy magic. Yep, there he goes. There he goes. All right, thank you, Kate. All right, so we are going to start here. To just to uh, just to clarify, I believe Tim has all three JTs. Yeah, I think so. 
Mm-hmm. Tim has all three JTEs. Tom has. We're counting, Coy. <laughs> Tim, Tim has all three. Tom only has one left. All right. So as we are going to drop out, boy, drop out, Kate, and we start with Tom. We start with Tom. Tom, you chose category number five. That lands us in the realm of rom coms. Rom coms for Tom. All right, Tom. Here you go. Who plays Juliet to Leonardo DiCaprio's Romeo in Romeo and Juliet? Claire Danes. Claire Danes is correct. Claire Danes is correct. Sorry, I really couldn't tell if the screen was frozen or if it was just Tom being Tom. It was just Tom being Tom. Being Tom. Um, all right, so let us now, now we see ourselves. We see ourselves now at a 14 to 13 score as Tim tries to take the uh, the lead here. And That's right, Tim. You find yourself trailing once again to Tom by only a point, though. So for two points and to regain that lead, you selected category number six, and that corresponds to the world of Oscar movies. And your question about that lovely ceremony I will never host, probably. Who? was the only person to win an Academy Award for acting in the 2014 film Boyhood. Ethan Hawke? Incorrect, looking for Patricia Arquette. Patricia Arquette, all right, so Tim, uh, go ahead. Now, Tim needs to hit this in order to bounce it back to Tom, and he chose category 12, Mark, which is uh, the world of dramas. Yes, it is, and boy, do we have some of that here today, too. So, Tim, for three points, this could give you a two-point lead over Tom. World of dramas. Here's the question. In what 2008 drama do Meryl Streep and Amy Adams play nuns? Doubt. Christian, there is no doubt who's in the lead, and that is Tim the Tank by two. All right, so we bounce back to Tom, who now has to hit his three-pointer, and he has category number 11, category number 11, and we find ourselves with Tom Hanks movies. Tom Hanks movies. That's my name. Yes, it is. All right, Tom. What film saw Tom Hanks receive his first nomination for Best Actor? Big. That's correct for three points. That is a big pull for Tom. I would have not said that. I would have said something completely different. As Tom now has taken the lead and where we're at. This is a back and forth talking about... Tom Hanks, let's bring up Forrest Gump. Ping pong battle here because you have the five pointer here by Tim. He hits it, it bounces back to Tom and forces Tom to try to win. If he misses, Tom will go on to face Jader Paramo. And here is the category mark. It's category number 18. Category number 18. Tim the Tank went all evens to make my job easier. Tim, that corresponds to a decade. And that decade is the 2000s. Could be any movie released from 2000 to 2009. And your question for five points and to force Tom to answer his five point question. Which actor plays investigator Frank Webber that assists Mickey Haller in The Lincoln Lawyer? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. First one. You can certainly do that. In the category of the 2000s, your question for five points. Which actor plays investigator Frank Levin that assists Mickey Howler in The Lincoln Lawyer? Is it Matthew McConaughey? to the next round this is 
is Tom. Mark, the answer? William H. Macy was assisting Matthew McConaughey in the classic, The Lincoln. All right, well, Tim, a hell of a match. Going to put you in the waiting room here. Big match. Big match. And Kate and Great. Tom does it. He advanced. Oh. And what a match it was. But look, this was a stressful match. So there's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, Grace, you see Tom this entire time. He's fighting back. He doesn't. I don't even think he knows he was playing in the match, but he he wins. Uh, how are you feeling him going into the next round against a uh, rookie? Uh, look, Jader Paramo, who just happens to be managed by Ken Napsok. <laughs> well, as we all know, there's nothing about Ken or his team that intimidates me. And I'm so sorry, Christian, that I will be moving forward and here to make your life miserable for another day. That was neck and neck. I mean, but look, that's how we roll. And I'm not at all surprised by this. And uh, clearly our pop uh, little program that we set up to keep him focused worked out. And uh, I'm quite thrilled with myself as usual. Let's make on brand. Uh, and Kate, how are you feeling there, Tommy? I mean, you had to yeah. keep him. You had to use those poppers to get him in there. But yeah. it, it's your second competitor who is now advancing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, is it is it stressful for you to, to not only worry about the trivia itself, but to be able to sure that Tom, you know, stays in line and knows where he's at? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, follow up to uh, Tim Franco's five point question there. Who played Josh Lucas's secretary in Lincoln Lawyer? Kate Mulligan. OK, <laughs> yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's true. Look it up. Mitten secretary. OK, you so did you know that William H. Macy question? Nope, sure did it. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, I got to ask yeah. before I, you answer the question, I do have to see how Tom's feeling here. Tom, how are you feeling? He probably doesn't know he's won. What Tommy. room are you guys in? Okay, Tommy. Tom, you won the match. Are you excited? Are you in the same house as me? No. Uh, I no. really hope. You, you know what, Christian? I would not say no if I were you. I have not oh. checked all my rooms yet. I don't so know. You very well could be here. You could be in any of our houses right now, honest to God. Tom, uh, you play against Jader Paramo, who's the hurricane. Uh, any words for the hurricane? Is it an actual hurricane? Okay. Some, some would say maybe. How you gonna get it in a room? Yeah, look, the, he's asking all the right questions. Yeah, uh, Christian, I, I think I got a way into this. Uh, Tom, I have a simple question, but I think it's answerable. You answered a lot of correct movie trivia questions today. Have you actually seen any of those movies? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I, now, the, one more thing I got to ask, and Grace, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about this as we get closer to this match with Jader. You have been on record saying that, you know, uh, uh, Jader, he, he, he's similar to what Roxy said, that he was, he was a fan who won a contest and now he's playing in the big leagues. And the fact that Ken is managing him. Do you still believe that Jader doesn't, be, doesn't belong here? Is this a real question? I assume I asked it. Uh. Absolutely. Like I've said many, many times, this is not for babies. Uh, Ken and his little playpen of jokes can go take a hike, okay? Well, it, the, the stage is set. Uh, Grace Hancock versus Ken Knapsack in a managing battle. And obviously, uh, Kate going to be holding Tom's leash, I guess, or maybe the other way around at this point. I don't even know anymore. Congratulations to this uh, absolute uh, circus that you all have become. So, uh, all right, I'm going to put Kate and grace and i don't know who scares me more tom or grace i still have no idea uh so there it is mark tom wins it in a battle and now bringing back both tim and coy uh, tim you can't be upset about this match i mean this was a hell of a match you get pied in the first round you, you ace bond you missed that uh it was the two point or not the two pointer it was the three pointer that kind of set you up there um for under this unfortunately miss it was whoever misses first yeah a how did you feel about your gameplay and then B, how'd you feel about uh, going up against Tom? You know, I felt I felt fine about my gameplay. I mean, we, you know, I spun away on that on that first that first spin in the in the, uh, in the second round, and I got spin of choice, which is what I, you know what I, the ideal situation to be able to pick my ideal category. And then I did well in my ideal category. But you know, we were we were even matched. I mean, throughout the throughout the match, I mean, we were missing even missing the same questions, um, which was interesting. You know, I I, I kind of kicked myself. I had a couple opportunities where I could have 
I knew the the answer, but I didn't say the right answer, and that happens, you know. And 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 you know, and then in terms of the third round, you know, legitimately, there's times when it's just you just get questions that you're not going to know, and and that happens, you know. It's no reason to hang your head, you know. I'm proud of the way I played. I think I still represented the Mercs, you know. We're still in it, you know. The Mercs are not out, and I'm going to do my best to support my 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 faction, you know, throughout the rest of this tournament. Uh, you know, that's a great point there, Coy. So you guys had a momentum going, and you, this isn't one of those things where, like, oh, Tim just didn't show up. He, he just got into a fight. I mean, it was just a, it was a scrap in the middle of the ring, and it was it was a fight. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, there is one piece of the puzzle that is not part anymore. How, what do you do kind of going into the, uh, into the next one? Well, I do feel like we still have our momentum because he played just as well as I could have hoped. It was down to a forced five-point question, and that's where we got to. He handled Bond like we expected him to. So I feel the momentum still there. And like he said in the beginning, we're a family. So I know Tim's still going to be in the meetings, in the conversations, in the text threads, in the DMs. We're all organized together. So I'm not worried about the next match. Uh, this went as well as it could have, and I'm still really proud of Tim. I'm still very glad I drafted him when I did, and he's still very much one of the Mercs. Well, yeah, Tim, the, uh, the Schmodown is still brimming with storylines, and you're involved in a few of them, as is the faction, the Quirky Mercs. But my question is more on a human level. So you said before the match, Tim, you wouldn't mind one day being pals with Tom and hanging out. Now that you did take a tough loss to him, do you still feel like you two should hang out? And what does that look like? You know, I, I'm still down to hang out, you know, even though, even though, you know, it was a tough fight. You know, maybe we could have our own little, like, you know, off the record fight as well, you know, we can go to a bar when it's safe, of course, and, you know, have a little match, you know, it'd be fun. You know, I'm down, you know, I'm down. I'm worried about Tom. I'm worried about him, but I want to I make sure he's okay. And I think everyone needs a friend. Coy. I think Tom's the quirkiest non-Merc, and I, I like that about yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Coy, you know, tomorrow, though, uh, or not even, tomorrow is a massive match between Chris Jericho and Kevin Smith. I got to ask you, you have two big matches coming up. Tomorrow's match, and then on Friday, you're going to have Perry Nemiroff versus Mike Kalinowski. So let's talk about those both those matches right now. Let's start with Jericho versus Smith. How is Kevin feeling going up against this? One of the biggest matches we've ever had in, uh, in Schmodown history. I mean, Kevin knows movies. Kevin tours talking about movies. Kevin makes movies. Kevin is movies. So it's really a matter of showing Kevin that this is a sport made for his brain. What The way Kevin processes, this is just that competitively. So he's going to love it. He's going to excel. This is going to be amazing. I think it's the start to the, the kevin Assance. It's going to be a run. And I really hope, uh, you know, the spectacle's there. I'm, I'm really excited to... The fact that we're organizing with wrestling organizers, the fact that it's against Jericho, this is two Titans going head to head, and we're not sleeping on Jericho. The man knows his trivia. I respect the fact that he really invests in movies. We're not counting him out, but it's Kevin Smith. I'm so excited. This is the match, and I couldn't be more ready. And the last question here, once again, is like I said, and then on Friday, Mike Kalinowski. Two-time Inner Geekdom champion. We know what he's done in the teams division. Going up against Perry Nemiroff. We haven't seen Perry in single and shoot in in non-exhibition in a professional match since I think 2017, maybe 2018. But it's been at least almost three years. Uh, how is she feeling, and can she win this match? Well, I mentioned the love of movies with Kevin with a side of competition, and we all know Perry's love of movies, but if you know Perry, she's arguably the most competitive person alive. Like, her and Lance Armstrong, short of, like, movie trivia juicing, same level of competition. It's going to be insane because nobody wants it more than Mike Kalinowski except for a something to prove Perry Nemiroff. So it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be, in the wise words of Dan Burrell, a barn burner. It's going to be insane because these are two titans and one of them's an underdog. Everyone's counting out Perry and that's how the quirky marks have been this entire time. So I like where we stand. I'm really confident in Perry. I love her to death. I can't wait to see her take out Mike just like I did once. Well, thank you so much. And once again, Tim, hell of a match, my man. Really appreciate it. Glad to have you back in the league. And same here with Corey. Going to drop you guys out. And we have our final score here today. Mark, what a match it was. Final score. Tom, 17. Tim Franco, 16. That is the end of the match. And Tom will advance to the next round. Don't forget, tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow. What a massive, massive match. Co-main event. Andrew Guy versus Ben Bateman. Number two. 
and it is for a number one contender match. The winner will be facing the champion. And the main event, Kevin Smith, Chris Jericho. It is here and it is tomorrow so make sure you check that out mark exciting times and don't forget about friday you have kalinowski versus perry nemiroff in the last tournament match for this week hey i'm getting excited it feels like schmodown eve all of a sudden but you're right chris we have this huge matches tomorrow but then what happens afterwards do we just pack it up and go home no the schmodown the tournament the excitement what does it do christian it keeps on a uh, chugling there you go absolutely right everybody so also make sure that you head on over to patreon we have over the last month seen so many new patrons and we're so glad that you guys are finding all the value in that ten dollar tier all of the pay-per-views that we do all the special exhibitions that we do the watch alongs you get it and don't forget that the spectacular that's coming up in december you're going to get that everything and if you can't you just go to the shmonellive.com and you get whatever pay-per-view you want to get single just get it click it watch it uh for mark ellis i'm christian harloff and we'll see you tomorrow